Hey everybody, how's it going? I am Zach Peterson. I am your local technical consultant for Altium. And today we are going to be talking about an AC PDN simulation. Now, this is something that was actually requested by a viewer. Uh, it wasn't requested directly, but this is something that we do need to do based on a viewer question. This is gonna be a really fun intro to how to use Spice in Altium Designer, as well as how to do PDN simulations generally. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, everybody, so before we get started setting up a PDN simulation in Spice, what I'm gonna do is take a look at a viewer question really quick. Caleb Chrome writes, Hi Zach, loving the videos. How can we take a completed PCB and verify the PDN performance slash impedance at high frequency? I'd love to see a video on that. Similarly, how can we simulate slash predict it with Altium? I've tried out the PDN analyzer and it's great for what it does, but it seems to only be a DC tool and it's kind of useless for predicting the performance of the stack up slash planes and decoupling. So that's a great question, Caleb. And unfortunately, you can't do the, all of those things with one single tool in Altium Designer. You actually have a few different options. So you mentioned the PDN analyzer, which actually does take a finished PCB layout and does a DC analysis. So essentially what it does is it calculates the current density around the board. It calculates where the current density is going to be highest. That helps you identify things like hot spots in the PDN. And then you can probably identify some areas in the PDN, specifically with respect to the ground planes and the power planes that you might need to adjust so that you don't have such high current densities in certain parts of the layout that can help you keep the board cooler. All of that is great for reliability. So yes, there is a tool for DC. Now for AC, what you need to do with a finished PCB is you need to actually use a field solver. Now there isn't the type of field solver that can do like a full 3D simulation in Altium Designer. That actually needs an external tool. And frankly, other PCB design platforms operate in that way. Some vendors have their own 3D field solver that they use. Some vendors will have to interface with a third party field solver. Altium actually can interface with a third party field solver. So ANSYS field solvers can be used to do the type of simulation that you're talking about with a finished PCB, meaning like you've done the layout, you've done all the component arrangement and routing, you have the stack up finalized. It's basically a totally finished board. You can export that board into an ANSYS field solver and do a full wave PDN simulation. Now, what about on the front end when you're still doing the design and you're still trying to figure out things like your decoupling capacitor network, how much plane capacitance do you need, how much spreading inductance can you tolerate in the PCB? So that you can actually do with SPICE. And so doing SPICE allows you to get some pretty important insights about the impedance of your PDN. Now, it's not going to be exact, but it lets you figure out pretty much kind of onto an order of magnitude what the impedance of the PDN is going to be generally. And you can even do it in sections. So meaning like I have multiple rails coming off of, of a regulator. You can actually do that type of simulation as well in SPICE. SPICE is for circuits. And you're not gonna be able to take account of things that involve wave propagation. So you can't figure out things like EMI, you know, radiated emissions, and you can't figure out things like resonances in the stack up. So SPICE can can't really do that unless you do some additional coding where you basically you know program in wave propagation into the solver and there are actually some guides online to how to do that with transmission lines I've never taken the same approach with a PDN but theoretically you could try and do that now within spice inside of Altium designer what you can do is you can actually just go into the schematics you can set up all your capacitors you can model your plane capacitance and spreading inductance and the inductance of any vias and, and anything like that. And then you can actually run some AC simulations to get number one, the PDN impedance, which is your ultimate goal with PDN impedance simulations. But you can also get a transient response. So you can identify if the, uh, the transient response on the PDN is gonna to be too large for whatever your load component is. So it's those two things that we're gonna be looking at, at, at in this video and in the next video. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started in Altium Designer now. 
Okay, so I'm inside Altium Designer right now. I'm just gonna load up this big schematic. And this schematic has a whole bunch of what looks like RLC networks. So this might look like a really odd way to do a PDN simulation. But what we've done here is we basically are doing some modeling here for like a voltage regulator module and then the actual last mile from the plane up into an integrated circuit. So I'm gonna explain all the different parameters in here so you kind of get the idea. So what I've done here is I've basically picked out this bank of like nine capacitors here and they aren't necessarily chosen in any specific, you know, with any specific methodology. What I did is I just kind of selected some capacitors and I added in their parasitics just to simulate what happens in a PDN when you have multiple capacitors in parallel. So here, you know, I've got this capacitor, I've got its equivalent series resistance, I've got its equivalent series inductance, and then I've basically done that for nine capacitors. And then what I did is I quadrupled that. So I took this and just copied it over here, and then I copied it over here and copied it over here. So you can kind of see what's going on. Now, if you actually open up this capacitor model, and then you go over to the properties panel, you look in the parameters area, you'll actually see that you can uh, enter in the series inductance and then the series resistance, and then you can even put in a parallel resistance. Um, so for example, if you wanna model like a lossy capacitor that has some DC resistance that allows essentially leakage current to flow through the capacitor, you could do that here. Um, so this is really a general model, and you'll find this in, if you look up here in the properties panel, the simulation generic components library. So the newest version of Altium Designer has this library built in. You can access all of these different components in that library and use it to create a simulation just like this. So you could enter in those values here. I didn't do it just because normally when I create these simulations in Spice or in Altium uh, or another package, I just put all this stuff in here and just put them as discrete components. That way, if I want to, I can you know double click this and I could change this value for this equivalent series inductance if I wanted to. Now let's look here in the regulator section. So in the regulator section, I have this uh, 1.8 uh, volt uh, regulator. Um, basically the idea here is I wanna supply 1.8 volt core voltage down here to this load. And I'll get into why I've modeled the load this way in just a moment. Um, but it has some output resistance and some output inductance. So it's essentially a low impedance output. And that's essentially what you want on a voltage regulator module. And um, you wanna match that to a very low impedance power delivery network. So the idea here behind putting all of these different capacitors in parallel is essentially to try and get to a, the lowest PDN impedance possible. Let's look down here after we come across this net and then we come over here. So the plane capacitance, so this is what CP1 is right here. And I've basically just modeled it as being one nanofarad. So the plane capacitance essentially models the capacitance between, as its name suggests, the ground plane and the power plane pair. So those are gonna be separated by some dielectric that effectively form a capacitor and it has some capacitance. Now that plane capacitance varies on based on the number of factors. And sometimes what you'll see in like a high speed PCB stack up is there will actually be a high DK dielectric right there in that layer. And that is what's gonna give you larger plane capacitance. Um, then if you have the planes very large on a larger board, you can get to even larger plane capacitance values. So this models that, okay? So this is that one nanofarad. So a little large, but that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll work with it. Then um, we have some plane inductance here. So this plane inductance is uh, basically the spreading inductance. So it models the current loop that's formed for uh, current that flows across the power plane and then has its return current locally in the ground plane. So one of the things that's interesting about spreading inductance is that even if you increase the plane size, eventually you stop decreasing the spreading inductance. So bigger planes are great for more plane capacitance, but not necessarily for reducing spreading inductance. Then here RP1 basically models the, uh, uh, models the plane resistance. Uh, then we have a via transition and 
as I've shown in some earlier layouts involving uh, involving like a BGA with multiple rails, you actually have, will have like multiple, or you could have multiple vias in parallel. So that could reduce the impedance of this uh, RL section here leading up to the load. And then over here at the end, uh, we have the actual load component. So I've modeled the load this way uh, because we basically want to simulate what happens when we have switching action. And so what I mean with switching action is that we have a transistor or you know a CMOS buffer or some, some logic circuit, whatever it may be, that basically draws a quick burst of current into the PDN. And so I've just modeled that using uh, essentially just a pulse driver here. And this is using the pull or the voltage source component uh, in the simulation library. If you look down here, you can actually set the rise time and fall time. So these are set to one nanosecond. Um, you can set the pulse on time, basically the unit interval. And then uh, you can set the, uh, the DC and AC magnitude if you want. Um, the, that goes on to the gate. And uh, then we're able to basically model switching action in this logic circuit. If you look at some application notes or some other design guides with SPICE, what instead you'll see here instead of Q1 uh, is you'll actually see like a, a current source, basically a pulsed current source. You could do it that way if you want to. You could actually put like a full CMOS buffer circuit if you really wanted to, that's fine. Then you'd be basically simulating an IO. That's another way to do it. However you do it doesn't really matter. The whole point here is to basically just ha simulate what happens when the current drawn into the PDN uh, drastically increases very suddenly, which is what you would see when a lot of IOs switch on a high speed component. Now, of course, anyone that looks at this uh, at this little circuit here is gonna say, hey man, shouldn't you have a current uh, limiting resistor on this transistor? And if we were like trying to build like a transistor amplifier or something, the answer would be, yeah, sure, that's what we would wanna do, um, but we're not trying to build that. Again, we wanna just draw in a quick burst of current and then see what happens on the PDN. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I basically, uh, you know, explained all the different pieces that go into this PDN. And so what I want to do now is just delete some of these capacitors real quick. And then we're going to simulate what happens with a transient uh, simulation here. Let's see if I can delete these inductors. Hold on. Okay, so now we've only got a bank of nine capacitors here. And what we want to do then is also, we can also simulate what happens if, you know, maybe we're on like a standard four layer board and um, let's say we only have, you know, 40, let's say 40 picofarads of capacitance. So um, not a lot of capacitance. Then what we want to do is bring up the simulation dashboard and start verification. Of course, all of this comes from the simulation library. So, you know, it'll all pass simulation uh, verification. And then we have some probes here. Uh, and then we want to enable some analyses. So on this transient analysis, um, it's set to go to five microseconds. That's fine. Um, you could set it for longer or shorter if you want. Just remember that the period here for our pulse uh, on Q1 is uh, one microsecond. So this will capture five pulses. Um, the step size will be important later. And when we actually get to part two of this, uh, this video, I'll actually show a case where uh, you actually need to make this step size much smaller in order to capture some more important details in the simulation. For the AC sweep, um, I'm just gonna go up to 10, 10 gigahertz. Uh, that's fine. Um, one thing to note is that once you get to into the high gigahertz, you might start to see plane, uh, power plane resonances uh, in an actual measurement. Spice can't capture that. So the results aren't gonna be super accurate once you get up to the 10 gigahertz range. So first, let's go ahead and run our transient simulation. Okay, so we can see the drain current here. And then what we wanna look at next is the transient response on the power rail. So this is the voltage. And this is the voltage that's measured. And you can see here that you get a pretty nice spike from 1.8 volts down to 1.5 volts, followed by, if I just zoom in, this really high frequency oscillation. So you basically got two oscillations that are you know, superimposed on each other in the low impedance and the high impedance state. Here, this is when the, the, uh, the logic circuit switches on. So basically current is flowing through the load. And then here is where it switches off. You basically got two uh, frequencies that are active here. You've got a low frequency and you've got a really high frequency. And that's why this, uh, that's why this uh, wave looks like this. And then in the other case, you've just got a, 
you've just got a low frequency and you can see it decays. But um, you know, what's really important here is how far this, uh, this excursion goes uh, above the desired voltage. And so it's about 200 millivolts, 250 millivolts either direction. So is that big, is that small? Well, if we were just dealing with five volt logic, like 250 millivolts is small potatoes. I mean, it's not that small, you know, it's, it's 5%. But uh, five volt logic, especially if you're like on old TTL logic, that logic is actually, has a big enough uh, uh, noise margin that uh, you don't need to worry about this. Um, those components were uh, resilient enough in terms of their, their, uh, their threshold voltages that you essentially didn't need to worry about big noise spikes like this. You would have never noticed it and you'd always be in the zero state or the one state. But for a 1.8 core voltage with CMOS, um, this is a little large. So then I wanna look at the impedance. So if I do my AC sweep, let me just change this to dB. So this is kind of the standard way to look at this. So when we put this on a dB scale, um, you can see we get some decent results here. We get down uh, to about negative 10 dB compared to one ohm. Uh, and then uh, we go back up to high impedance. And then you can see these peaks essentially here. So there's a series of peaks. Um, we don't have the finest resolution. So if we really wanted to get the cur curvature on these peaks, we would need to go to a smaller step size in the frequency domain. But we're just using two simulations here. We're using the transient analysis and we're using the AC sweep. So now let's go back and change the plane capacitance back to 1000 picofarads or one nanofarad. And then let's bring back all of our other components and rerun it and see what happens. Okay, so now we actually get a lot better on the, uh, let me close the messages window. So for, with the AC sweep results, we actually get a lot better in terms of the valley here around, what is this? This is around 30 megahertz. So this is not bad. Um, obviously we'd like to get rid of this peak here. And then right around one gigahertz, we would like to get rid of this peak as well. So we've got a couple of peaks here that we need to get rid of, but that's okay, we've done pretty well here. Um, so this actually shows that once we add in all of those capacitors, we're actually, and we increase the plane, or plane capacitance, we're able to get to a lower PDN impedance. Now you'll notice on this bank, you know, basically what I did is I just kind of quadrupled this bank of capacitors out. And that's why you get the overall lowering of the curve but you don't necessarily get a big change in the curvature itself. So like, for example, this long slope going into the high frequency domain hasn't reduced in terms of its slope. And you can see it still goes up to the same maximum value. Then let's look at the transient results. So at the transient results. Okay, so here's our transient results. Now that we had to let the simulation run for a second. And if we look at V, so we've got a couple of things going on here. And this is one of the reasons it's really nice to actually look at the waveform. So a couple of things have changed, right? First, that high frequency overlay here while the, uh, while the logic gate is on or while the uh, transistor is on, I should say, um, that has actually reduced in size, okay? So that high frequency uh, oscillation is basically gone, which is nice. However, we have a little spike going on right here. So this spike um, is actually really large and I would say excessively large uh, in our case. However, the overall amplitude for the rest of the curve has actually gone down. So it's gone down by about a factor of 2.5. So that's really nice. So if you remember before we were at about 250 millivolts uh, overshoot and undershoot, from our, targeted, uh, our target of 1.8 volts. Now we're only about 100 millivolts. So that's pretty good. So that's a nice reduction. So this should illustrate the value of actually adding in more capacitance to this PDN. You can reduce the size of this, uh, this waveform and then you can also overall reduce the, uh, the level on the impedance curve. So in the next video, we're gonna analyze this waveform just a little bit more to see how we can actually improve this even further. And then we'll actually look at what happens if you add inductance. Now I've said multiple times, don't add inductance. From this type of simulation, you can actually see what happens when you add in inductance into the PDN. So we'll look at that in an upcoming video. All right, everybody, thanks for sticking with me through this whole uh, simulation video. We're gonna continue this in part two and all of the stuff that I've talked about so far in terms of simulating the PDN and as well as uh, spreading inductance, we're gonna have all of that available in an ebook. That ebook is gonna be freely available to download. You don't even have to give Altium your email address. You're not gonna get any spam if you download this. 
Go download that ebook. You can get all the blog content that's associated with this simulation and hopefully you learn how to do your own spice simulations for PDN impedance and other circuits where you need to measure the impedance. All right, thanks everybody. And definitely don't forget to call your fabricator.